Okay, folks, welcome to part two of our series on the uh, video we're talking about here, how to put together a program either for yourself or what to look for in a provider or setting up a program for your flight training department. Uh, very important information. The next section is what we call the startle factor. Now this is something that's not given much attention. Uh, anything that you're going to read about uh, on upset recovery training, it's certainly often not included in techniques. It is mentioned briefly in the airplane upset recovery training aid. Uh, some of the research that's been done, for example, a big study on CalSpan, uh, noticed that uh, panic and fear is something that needs to be overcome in upset recovery training. And, and on that point, that is absolutely critical. And I think that's one of the key areas in upset recovery training that your provider has to deal with. And I would ask them how they do that because for example, in our program, when people leave it, we can guarantee them they have the knowledge, they have the skill, they have the ability, and they have the experience to recover from virtually any upset recovery situation, preferably recognizing and avoiding it and having all the tools to do that. Now, in an academic setting, we're quite smart, aren't we? I mean, we let's say, for example, we profess to have 150 IQ. Let's say we're real smart folks, and, uh, and we know everything there is to know about upset recovery. We've been practicing it. Uh, we know what we're doing. In a real situation, in a real upset, and this is unfortunately one of the downsides of simulator training. Uh, we believe simulator training is very, very good. We believe that it has a lot of value in upset recovery training. But one of the things that in a simulator, is the lack of what we call the reality factor, which dri drives or directly relates to the startle factor. And what the startle factor is, is the reality of being faced with a situation in an emergency that you, A, you didn't expect at all, and you were completely surprised by it, and now you're looking out the window, you're looking at a situation that you have maybe only seen a year ago in your upset recovery training. But the problem is, is now our 150 IQ goes to about 75. We're very alert, we have a heightened sense of awareness, we, we can see what's happening, but our ability to analyze and take action is rapid, very dramatically reduced. We are essentially become animals in the cockpit. We want to survive. Now, the reason why this is important is the fact when your body panics, it has a flight or fight mechanism. And very typically, either one of those are going to get you in trouble very, very quickly. We want to fight this situation, but we have to fight it correctly. We have to contain the startle factor. The reason is, is because if you get this situation into a developed upset beyond the envelope that you're used to, which is typically less than 60 degrees, if not 45 degrees, and you spend a lot of time in, in, uh, in airline flying or business or commercial flying, less than 45 degrees of magnitude probably your comfort zone, uh, less than 15 to 20, maybe 25 degrees of pitch, at the most 30 degrees of pitch. If you get in a situation where a whammo, bang, or you're disoriented, you get outside of that envelope, your reaction is most often going to be exactly wrong. It's going to be the wrong thing to do. For example, uh, what I'm getting at is we found through research that over 75% and in some instances as many as 90% of pilots the first time they are faced with an overbank situation in other words where they get themselves into a position uh, in an upset where they find themselves beyond their comfort zone let's say right here to 120 degrees of bank the reaction they have is to pull to try to make the houses smaller now sitting here in this video you may think that, that that's ridiculous well why would you pull well the the reason why people pull is because that's what's made the houses smaller for all those hours and we go with what we know. Let's say we have 10,000 hours of flight experience. Well, you know, except for the very minimal amount of time you had in stall training, and unless you're a CFI, you've never been on purpose above 60 degrees, and even if you have, it's probably been by mistake or confidentially or up for a quick aerobatic ride with somebody. The problem is when you get overbanked, those tools for all those hours we have where pulling means up is completely wrong. But in that panic, that heat of the moment, when you get upside down and you're seeing ground and you're descending, your flight or fight mechanism is to get altitude and that is pulling. And that's by far one of the worst things you can do. Unstalled, it's going to bury the nose. If you are stalled, it's going to take you deeper into the stall where the spin lives, negative roll damping, and from there it only gets worse. So you can see that predilection with minimizing altitude loss can be a big killer in an upset. We have to 
contain the startle factor, the first thing we need to do is we need to stop and analyze. All right, we have to take with proper training, just a second to recage our brain to do the right thing because if we react and we don't contain the startle factor, we can take a unfavorable situation and make it bad and take a bad situation and make it worse and take a really bad situation and make it unrecoverable. So that is the biggest thing. So even with proper training, do you have the mental discipline to take the proper action, a trained response not an instinctual response in an upset situation. That is a key component of training. Once you have the training, the key to being able to use it in a real situation is the mental discipline to take a moment to analyze and then implement a trained response to get out of the situation. So containing the startle factor is a critical component, and as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, an area that is not given much attention in discussions on upset recovery, but it is a big one, and it is probably the key to solving a situation and getting away from it quickly before it becomes too late. I hope that helps. And we'll talk next time about another aspect of our five-step building block to the core elements of a, of a program.